Have I been cooking mashed potatoes wrong for 30 years? Let's find out. Mashed potatoes are not some elusive unicorn or lightning in a bottle. Getting quality mashed potatoes is pretty easy and a pretty simple process. But there are ways, according to internet cooks, to get the same, if not better quality, when you stray from the traditional method. So I am gonna try two new ways to cook mashed potatoes and also cook a control group with the traditional method just to see which one works best and which tastes best. I'm gonna use the same ingredients for each and I'm gonna taste each one and let you know what I think. Let's get cooking. To try to make this as fair as possible, I'm not counting the peeling of the potatoes or the cutting. I'm just adding three minutes to the final tally at the end to each. Also, for each of these, I'm gonna be adding the exact same ingredients. Two pounds of potatoes, six tablespoons of butter, and a half a cup of heavy cream, and some salt to taste. Salt is the only variable amount. All right, so let's start with the one that's gonna take the longest, the sous vide. Now this is spelled S-O-U-S-V-I-D-E if you're looking for it on the internet. This is a great device that allows you to cook foods in a water bath at a constant temperature. The food is sealed in a plastic bag and then placed in a water bath with the heated circulator. This type of cooking normally takes quite a long time because it's not cooking at an intense heat. Now, this version will require more liquid than the other versions because I cook the other two in water. So, I do have to add a half a cup of water here. So. Added the potatoes to the bag with the butter, and then I poured in one half cup of cream and a half cup of water. Then I added a tablespoon of salt, and I'm gonna salt the taste later. I sealed the bag and I clipped it to the side of the sous vide. I'm already an hour plus into this recipe. How, you may wonder? Well, the sous vide needs time to come to temperature. So in order to get this machine and the water to 195 degrees Fahrenheit or 90.5 Celsius, that takes a while. So it's been going at this point, like I say, for over an hour. These potatoes are gonna be in there for an hour and a half. So while we wait, let's put the potatoes in the pressure cooker. These should be cut in half and then into six pieces. We'll put this in the pot with enough water to cover them by one inch. I added some salt to the water. Uh, if I were making these again, I would definitely add more salt than just a teaspoon, probably a tablespoon or so. These are pretty easy. I put the top on and cook them on high pressure for 15 minutes with a quick release of the steam. While the pressure cooker heats up and pressurizes, I can make the control version. Now this is the traditional version, and for this version, it's pretty similar to the pressure cooker. I cut the potatoes, put them in a pot, and filled them just to cover, and then I added salt. They cooked on a stove on high until they were tender enough to fall off of whatever they were pierced with. In this case, I was using a reusable cake tester from Faberware. I love this thing. You can tell exactly when the potatoes are finished. If you stab them and they come up with the tool, they're not done. If they slide off, they are. So while these boil, I added cream and butter to the bowls. I'll be ricing the potatoes into them. I do have a food mill and I could do that with these, but I decided that a ricer is a more common tool. You can hand mash these if you want, but just don't over mash them. They will get gluey. And that's also why I avoid a cake mixer because it's really easy to over mix potatoes with a cake mixer or a food processor. They all came out about the same time. The sous vide was done first. I need to reserve all the liquid in this bag. So I put a strainer over the big bowl and I cut the bag and poured it through. And then I just riced the potatoes right into that liquid. Remember, if a piece falls out into the liquid, you could just put it right back in the ricer. It's not a big deal. So once that was done, I gave them a quick stir and I salted them. Now the pressure cooker releases its steam. I drain the potatoes and I rice them as well into the bowl with butter and cream. Now, this is a great way to do this because the heat of the potatoes will melt any cold butter. I let it sit for a minute or two before I start mixing it and it normally makes a nice, smooth mashed potato. I salted these to taste as well. Finally, for the traditional method, I pretty much did the same way as I did with the pressure cooker. All right, three different mashed potatoes. So starting up, I can't do a blind 
test here because I know which ones are which. I've tasted them all already. So I can't really do a blind taste test on this. Uh, I also kind of film on my own a lot, so it's, it's, it's very difficult to do that. So I'm just gonna taste them and I'm gonna try to give you my honest, unbiased opinion. So let's get started. Let's go, let's go longest to shortest. So longest would be the sous vide potatoes. These came in at two hours and 40 minutes. Absolutely perfectly cooked. And that's what you can expect with a sous vide. Not only perfectly cooked, but perfectly cooked and just staged ready to go and can stay at that temperature for quite a long time and not overcook because it's never cooking it more than it needs to be. It's always bringing it up to the temperature that it needs to be and just holding it there. So absolutely perfect way to cook, especially if you have a lot of time and a lot going on. A sous vide would be an amazing way to cook these. This is delicious though. I really like the sous vide mashed potatoes. Coming in at 46 minutes is the pressure cooker. There is something different about these potatoes. There's almost like an essence of potato flavor, right? In these other ones, especially in, the, in this one, you're gonna taste a, muted, a more muted potato flavor, mainly because you're washing away a lot of the, not just nutrients, but a lot of the flavor compounds when you boil and then rinse these and, and, and get rid of the, uh, the water. Here, you're cooking them in less water, and once you mash them, there's almost like a potato chip flavor to them. They taste very different than the other uh, potatoes that I've made here. So definitely a different type of potato. It takes a little longer. If I, had, if I didn't have any space on my stove though, I would definitely do this. And if I was gonna make croquettes or something else, uh, maybe a shepherd's pie or something like that, I might consider doing this because this really does add a deep potato flavor to the mashed potatoes, which you just don't get in the other two methods. All right, regular old traditional, boiled on the stove, 26 minutes start to finish. It's a classic, it's perfect. It's, it's the standard. It is exactly what you hope to get out of a mashed potato. Butter, salt, lots of good flavor, creaminess, fluffiness, all of that delivered quickly. You can almost, I mean, it's within minutes you can make this. In under a half an hour, you can have it boiled, mashed, put on your table, ready to go. So uh, I, I think this is, you know, weeknight. You got, you, you want to do something else in the evening, maybe watch a movie, you want to get done with dinner quickly. You're going to want to do it the traditional way. You got a bunch of people coming over and you don't want to have to babysit potatoes and you want to be able to just get them out of the kitchen and riced or get them out of the kitchen and run through the food mill as quickly as possible once guests sit down and you can keep them in there basically in a holding pattern, sous vide's gonna be the way to go. You wanna do something interesting with it, maybe make it in another dish, so like a shepherd's pie or a croquette, or if you, all your burners are taken up on your stove, you're gonna to wanna to go with the pressure cooker. All of these are good methods. All of these work and all of these taste good. So. It's not about which one's better, it's about which one's better right now. Which one's better for me tonight? Because different cooking situations re require different solutions. And now that you know how to use each one of these tools, you'll be able to decide that for yourself on which one you're gonna make tonight. All right, that's gonna be it for this week. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Please like, share, subscribe. And I know I say that every time, but just one up thumb or one comment could get my video in someone else's feed and that could help spread the word of this channel and that would be super helpful. So I just genuinely would hope that you will like or comment and if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm gonna be posting things here every week and if this is something that you like, please come back every week. All right, I'll catch you next week. Until then, season liberally.